Before you start your first week with a new puppy, I'd like to share seven real lessons learned in the first seven days in taking care of my eight-week-old border collie, so that you can spend more time enjoying and less worrying. Number one, bring tissue paper on the ride. Remember to bring a lot of tissue paper because a young puppy is likely to throw up on your car due to motion sickness. Although not all puppies experience car sickness, it never hurts to stay prepared. If you see your puppy yawn and drool excessively, she may be experiencing car sickness. So put a lot of tissue paper under the puppy. You can also put your hands beneath the puppy to feel the stomach rumbling right before she throws up. Stay ready. During the two-hour ride to her new home, poor Ellie threw up twice until she emptied her stomach. But don't worry, she came back to life when she entered our yard. Number two, let puppy's stress fade. Entering a new environment can be extremely stressful for a puppy. If she doesn't eat in the first day and is not showing any interest in treats, boiled chicken, or peanut butter, don't freak out. In the first three days, the puppy will be overwhelmed by questions about surviving. Where is her mom and siblings? Who are the walking creatures ten times tall? Why is she sleeping in a crate by herself? The puppy is not herself under such a big life change. Imagine that we are abducted by 200 meter tall aliens. Even though those aliens treat us like their families, Ali almost ate nothing in the first two days. Now she eats everything. Number three, dog proof your surroundings. Ali eats everything. Evolution has yet to teach her to distinguish food from dangerous stuff. Ali's favorite snack is mulch. Every time, I would have a mini panic attack when I saw her trying very hard to swallow a large piece of mulch. For a short-term prevention, we sprayed vinegar on the mulch piles. That didn't stop her. Eventually, we set up wire fences. Before letting your puppy roam around, put away electric wires, coins, keys, and wedding rings. Never anticipate a young puppy to know what cannot be put into their mouth. Number four, no rush in the training. Training will be much easier when there is a bond between you and the puppy. Ellie is a border collie, so I selfishly wanted to teach the young puppy many things as fast as I can. She was extremely smart. She learned 11 commands in the first seven days. But I gradually discovered that she could get confused and frustrated due to information overload. When I became impatient in teaching her, she could sense my impatience. Now I try to spend more time playing instead of training. As a result, she looks into my eyes much more often to seek commands and direction. That was the nature of a working breed. So take your time to build. The bond with the puppy, and she will look up to you. Number five, start from a small area. Confine your puppy in a restricted area. This has two benefits: first, a peace of mind for you; second, faster potty training. Ellie instinctively wanted to go potty in the yard without any training. We were so thrilled about winning such a lottery, so we granted her access to the entire first floor. But party accidents started to happen on the third day. To make things worse, she could just disappear in our sight, and then we heard the sound of chewing. On day four and five, she was already driving me crazy. While I was cleaning her poop, she was chewing my couch. Now we can find Ellie in the playpen. She can only go to three places: her playpen, the yard, and her crate. We spend a lot of time playing with Ellie in her playpen, so she started to like her playground within such a restricted area where she naps, eats, and plays. The puppy is less likely to do her business there. Number six, have a fixed schedule. 
When you are with your dog, one is always training the other. For a healthy, long-term companionship between you and your dog, you should be the leader of your puppy's pack. As the pack leader, you are responsible for deciding your puppy's schedule. Dogs are extremely adaptive. For this very reason, the canine species could prosper with human. Without a fixed schedule for Ellie in the first three days, I was exhausted because all my attention was on her. After adopting a strict schedule, Ellie learned to amuse herself to take a nap while I had to work. Number seven, teach puppy to love the crate. Going to the crate could be the happy ending of a puppy's day, as long as you make sure she understands two things. First, good things happen in the crate. Second, you will always come back. When you first start crate training, the puppy will cry out of her heart and soul. If you can develop a stone heart to ignore her and only come to her when she calms down, the pain will be short for both you and the puppy. Because a puppy sleeps for 18 hours a day, a crate could be made to her safe and cozy bedroom rather than a prison. In the first two nights, I slept with an arm's reach to Ellie's crate, but I would only make a sound if she stopped crying. Apparently, I didn't get much sleep, but within a week, she could happily jump into her crate before a good night. With that seven lessons I learned, I hope you won't have to go through the same mistakes I made. Make sure you're subscribed for more videos and follow Ellie on Instagram.